Hello, and thank you so much for listening to Citizen Speak. I'm your host, Garrett Martin. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this podcast is going to be talking about five things to take away from San Bernardino. Now, this isn't about the attackers. This isn't about speculations on what happened or why it happened. There's still a lot of facts that are coming out. The story is still developing. I'm not here to talk about who did what and why. I'm here to talk about five things that we really need to take away from this mass shooting. Number one, we have mass shootings almost on a daily basis here in America. San Bernardino is number 355. There's been 355 mass shootings here in America this year alone. It's starting to become the point where it's the daily thing. You have people wake up in the morning, they check the news, and they'll check the news throughout the day, trying to figure out where the next mass shooting is going to happen, or where the carnage is happening at here in America today. Mass shootings are at least four people being killed during that shooting. Four people. Now, some shootings go over this number, but... If only four people were to be killed in all 355 of those mass shootings this year alone, we would have lost 1,420 innocent people this year alone from mass shootings. A lot of people, conservatives, when President Obama, after the Colorado Planned Parenthood attack, after he had said, enough is enough, they criticized him. They said, oh, President Obama, he's had enough and he's coming for our guns. We're, no one's coming after your guns. But what we do need is we need real change. Number two, mass shootings happen where there's not many guns or no guns at all. That's not saying that we need guns for every person in every location. That's saying that we need better security across the nation. And I know that it costs money and you can't have every small business doing this. And you don't want every single facility to look like a prison. But if you have the laziest Congress who continues to ignore gun control and we have a whole section of our media who continues to say that we're politicizing the issue when we talk about gun control, that's the option that you have. The option that you have is to make every single school look like a maximum security prison. You have every single daycare facility look like a maximum security prison. Anywhere that you go, if you don't want gun control, then you want it to look like a maximum control prison. Because not everybody's going to carry a gun. That's just the way it is. You know, um, I'm a hunter, and I don't carry a gun on me when I go out. I don't have a need to. I really don't. This is America. It's the land of the free. And I'm not saying that we need to take guns away from people. But what we do need is we need number three. When tragedy strikes on this scale, we need real action. We need real politicians who are going to put in real actions, who are going to actually stand behind the American people who want gun control, who look out there and they see on a daily basis we're losing people because there's hardly any gun control. Some critics will say, well, look at Chicago. Chicago has some of the uh, strict strictest gun laws in the nation. My rebuttal of that is look at where those guns are coming from. From the guns that have been picked up, from the shootings that have happened in Chicago, the majority of those guns have actually come from other states that have weaker gun laws than Illinois. But yet Chicago is wrong. And I'm not talking that you need to take guns away from everybody. And that's, that's not the, the option here. What I'm saying is... Right now, we have gun show loopholes. 
where you can have a, a bad background, go to a gun show, and still buy a gun. We need to close that loophole. We have laws that make it so that way people who want to own a gun store don't have to show their books to the feds when they come in and ask for them. Yeah, the feds are legally allowed to ask to look at the books of the gun seller. The gun seller doesn't have to give those over if they don't want to. We got to keep track of the people who are buying guns. We got to fix that three day waiting period. After all, look at Dylan Roof. Dylan Roof was the shooter who shot up the church. But the guns that he used, he had legally bought. He did have a gun that somebody had bought for him uh, legally and gave it over to him. But the guns that he had bought, even though he was on an FBI watch list, he came in one day before the weekend happened. He said, hey, I want to buy a gun. I know there's a three-day waiting limit. So I'm going to put that in today. Came back on Monday at the end of the three days and walked out with a gun. Next day, an uh, agent from the FBI called the store and said, Hey, uh, I see that Dylan Roof is trying to buy a gun. He's on our watch list. Don't sell it to him. Store said, Too bad. We already sold it to him. It was in the three-day waiting period. You can be on the terrorist watch list and still buy a gun. 90% of the people who had bought guns that were on the terrorist watch list bought it without any red flags going off in 2014. That three-day waiting period is garbage. We need real policies that work. We need people to actually enforce these policies. We need our politicians to hold these gun sellers accountable for not doing things properly. Number four. Politicizing gun rights issues is a cowardly ploy by conservatives urging us not to take action. Every single time that we have a mass shooting, every single time that we have kids in schools gunned down or we have a Planned Parenthood attacked, you have someone like Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity or take your pick of any other conservative outlet. They always say, oh, well, these liberals, these liberals out there are politicizing this issue. We have people who say, well, you shouldn't be talking about gun control. You shouldn't be pushing your agenda because you just had people die. You have this massive, horrific event. You just had people die in it. Don't come here pushing your event here. Don't come pushing your, your rhetoric. Don't come pushing these ideas that we need stricter gun control. By God, we're still mourning the loss of these people. To that I say we've had 355 mass shootings in 2015 alone. That's almost one a day. Some days didn't have any. Some days had more than one. We've had at least one a day. When is the right time to talk about gun control? When is the right time for us to sit down and act like adults and talk about real change. Is there ever a time? Because by the conservatives idea is that no, there's not because there's always somebody being gunned down in a horrific event. So there's never a right time to talk about this. That's a sad thing to think about. You can't talk about mass murders by guns because you're politicizing it. Okay, well, what's the waiting period for me to talk about gun control after somebody dies in a mass shooting? When's the, when's the right time? 
Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? In that time, you're having at least four more people die every single day. At least four people every day that you wait to talk about this very serious issue that affects us, that affects our nation. Every minute that you wait, you're risking more lives. When is the right time? Number five. We're the only developed nation not to have strict gun policies. And again, I'm not saying that we need to take people's guns. That's not at all what I'm saying. But we have these laws that aren't really enforceable. We have politicians who get money from lobbyists when they're super PACs. We have constant negligence done by our media telling us not to talk about this issue. Shut up and bow your heads, they tell us. So nothing gets done. And people say, oh, well, you know, if you have more guns, it'll be a safer place. What's that, Australia? Oh, wait, you, you, you don't really have any mass shootings since you had uh, enacted a gun, a gun ban? No? Oh, okay. Now, theirs is a big stream for America. They were founded completely different than we are. We have the Second Amendment which helps uh, protect our right to own guns. However, you even have uh, the founder of the NRA who said that we should have a regulated system for gun owners. They shouldn't be, you come out of the womb and you get a gun. Absolutely not. How many more people need to die? before we can act like adults and actually talk about this. I really want to know. I want to know what you guys think. You know, I'm trying not to go off on too big of a rant here because a lot of us are already thinking this. A lot of us are already thinking, how many more people need to die tomorrow before we have our representatives in our states talk about this. How many more people need to die on a national level before our congressmen in Washington talk about this? I mean, we have the president who wants real gun control. But how long until people on each side of the aisle come together and talk about real gun control? How long? How many more deaths? You don't even need to measure it in days anymore. You can measure it in bodies. Such a shame. It's the second attack within a week. And you have conservative media continuing to say, Oh, don't talk about it. Don't you politicize it. If you talk about it, that's going to be the end of the nation. You're going to betray who we are. Does it have to affect one of the people at the conservative media before something gets done? It shouldn't have to. We should never have to come to that point where it has to affect somebody who makes a lot of money to make real change. We should be looking at our everyday Americans who are getting gunned down in the streets and say, hey, enough is enough. We need change now. No, you can't talk about it. Can't talk about it at all. Thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Garrett Martin. I'm your host here on Citizen Speak. Make sure you find me on Twitter. Um, that's Citizen Speak. On Twitter, it's uh, at C-I-T-Z Speak. Uh, you can also find me on SoundCloud and YouTube as well. Uh, at Citizen Speak.
on those. Um, thank you so much for listening. And I, I encourage you, comment on this and let me know what you think. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, let me know it. Give me your viewpoint. I'd love to talk about it. I love to read all the comments. I love to hear what people who listen to this podcast say. I love to interact with people on my Twitter. I want to know what you, the average citizens, are saying about our nation. I don't want to hear some regurgitated garbage from the media saying, oh, well, we should do this or we shouldn't do this. You know what really matters? It's your voice that matters. We listen way too much to this mainstream media that drives an agenda by the rich and the powerful. Who's more powerful than us just regular citizens? I don't think anybody. You know, if we come together and we stand together, nobody's power than, po more powerful than the American citizens. All right, thank you again for listening. Make sure you find me on Twitter at sitspeak, that's C-I-T-Z speak. Thank you so much again for listening.